Okay, YouTube, what I'm doing right now is basically testing before I mount everything to the wall. I'm gonna touch it right now. Everything here is live. This line right here, I'm going to run it down this wall and a little bit over all the way around, all the way around there and to probably at the top of that, if I can put my finger on it, of that receptacle over there, somewhere lined up with that. That's where I'm going to mount my NEMA. Uh, my NEMA 5, uh, 1450 connector. So what I've done so far is I bought the 50 amp and it's right here. And for anybody that wants to learn this, um, I think if you've seen my other videos, um, as far as the DIY stuff, it's, this wasn't that hard, but you know, if you don't know how to work well with your hands, it'll take you a little bit longer, like it took me. So there are two wires here, the red one and the black one. If you can see that right there, red and black. And this is about, I want to say about $12 at Home Depot today. Um, I have the Square D um, breaker, breaker box and I specifically look for whatever this DP4075 is because while I have a mixture of different ones in here as far as that number, it seems that that DP475 will fix. But back to this. There are four wires that you're going to have to hook up. That's two of them. Now, the other one is a ground. I took one to go over here. And I took the other one to go over there. That's because this looks like where they put most of my neutral. It doesn't seem like there was a rhyme or reason or they're putting the or well, they put the ground and neutral on the same bus. And any electrician can tell me why they did that or if it's a big deal. Um, and I read a few, few things. I, I looked up the um, NEC on it and it says it's supposed to be to well not in NEC but a few videos and a few readings said it should be on um the neutral bar or neutral bus should be separate from the ground bus and I figure since this green bolt is right there that that should be the ground bus and this opposite side should be the neutral but either which way um Whoever the electricians were, they have neutrals in here on both sides. So if nothing has gone bad yet, I can't imagine anything going bad now. Well, I can imagine it, but um, the probability. So that's that piece. So this is a temporary setup. This is just for testing. As I said, I'm going to go in and come in, you know, basically because I have this raised up. I'm gonna go in and this, this six gauge is gonna go inside that wall and I'm gonna come up through that hole down there. And if you're looking at this real fat line here, that's the one that comes from the street. Now again, please anybody or everybody, please don't freak out. Um, this is my test setup because what I didn't want to do is put or mount the conduit and everything else and have it run into the wall and it not work. So I used to build computers back in the late 90s and early 2000s. So we'd always do some type of test setup before we put everything in nicely. Um, nothing different here. As you can see, it's plugged into this NEMA. Mine is made by Leviton and I put it on a two gang box because I didn't see 
anything that would fit this box in Lowe's or um, Home Depot. If there is something that fits it better, let me know. Otherwise, um, I think I'm going to be okay once I put that plate over it. And I didn't see the plate in there either. But I did see a plate on Amazon, so I'll be able to order the plate that'll go over this and cover everything up once I mount it on the wall. Uh, I probably mount it about uh, four or five feet up, maybe maybe lower, but at least four, at least four feet. So again. That's the NEMA piece that the Tesla NEMA adapter is already plugged into. And yes, I do have like three or four voltmeters and I've tested it with the voltmeter. So now let's see if it works in the vehicle. All right, so you guys have seen me do this before. So we're gonna go ahead and press the button. All right, so far so good. All right, so let's jump in the car and see what's going on. All right, so here we go. Well, we're definitely past four, four miles per hour right now. And as you can see, it's climbing, it's climbing. It's at 20. moves again now it's at 31 so 31 miles per hour that's a major increase from the four miles per hour that we had now i've heard people getting um up to 35 miles per hour but i think that's with some type of um, whatever they call wall unit because they say the charger is actually in the vehicle but the apparatus that can send the voltage and the amperage or the current is the technology that comes off the wall it slips my mind on what it's called right now but I, I'll probably put it in the notes um, so already it's at 31 miles per hour for easy math that means you get 200 miles in six hours if it moves at this pace. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just multiplying 30 times. Um, oh, wait a minute. I said two, you know, actually you get 180 miles in six hours. You get um, 210 miles in seven hours. Either which way it goes. Um, this weekend, I have traveled about 150, maybe 200 miles. Some of those miles actually went on on Space Ghost, my Suburban. And if you don't know who Space Ghost is, watch, watch one of the previous videos. And, and I've put about 150 on this vehicle for... The weekend this is what I actually bought the vehicle for and I'm happy now I may not see the, the supercharger again while I'm in town why because if in in four hours I can get 120 miles I can come home as late as 9 o'clock 10 o'clock at night and I'm pretty much still okay so this whole setup has been about a hundred dollars so far um i'm going to get the conduit tomorrow and i'm also um reading up on how i should mount this piece or how i should mount everything now that the wiring piece is done so now it becomes the aesthetics and it'll give me an opportunity to clean out the garage with that i think that will make someone happy we won't say any names or relationships but we'll go ahead and um, clean out the garage and I've seen in a video where they've went um, over the windows or, or 
about a foot above the windows or in in the home and even in the corners of where the wall meets the ceiling and go go around and bring the conduit right down to the the uh, NEMA connection box so I'm thinking about that and for anybody saying you know no go in the walls make it look make it look better one problem these are SIP panels and if you don't know what SIP panels are you probably should look it up, but I can tell you what it is and I can tell you what that is or what they are in a whole nother video. Uh, when I built the home, um, I definitely wasn't thinking about an electric vehicle at the time. And, but I'm really big into construction technology. And while there is a way that you can do it with SIP panels, it is totally not worth it. Go ahead and if you still want drywall, you can basically run a chase over the conduit um, and make it, you know, look like there's some type of band there, if you will. And that would look good as well. I'm not going for all of that. So, uh, so I'm going to go all the way around with the conduit, come down, and I'm going to be done. And I'll show you guys what it looks like after that. Well that's all i have for right now i mean you can see that it works uh it took me about i know it takes some people about 10 minutes but i actually tried one of those one of those nema outlets that you don't have to mount the one that lays on the ground that you're going to find at least in florida that will sit right behind your stove but i had the hardest time of getting the wire into that one and it it, it just got weird real quick and I didn't want to deal with it anymore. So I went ahead and switched to the with the one with the um, electrical box that you attach the, the NEMA flush mount to the electrical box. That was super easy. And that was five minutes of me putting that in. And probably another five minutes of me stripping the wire. And I can show you guys the tools if you need me to show you the tools everything that I use is basically if you've done any electrical work at all you already have the tools that you'll need um, I have 20 feet of 6-3 of well 6 gauge uh, 3 wire and I bought the NEMA outlet so basically five things the, the, the NEMA outlet the box the electrical box the the wire itself, the breaker, and one more thing I'm actually forgetting right now. So one, two, three, four is a breaker. It was one other piece. But I've spent a hundred dollars so far and I'm about to get twelve dollars back off of that because I'm taking the other the other piece back to Home Depot because the the one that I said that fits behind a range an oven range um, I couldn't use that so I'm not gonna use that so the conduit is not gonna cost that much and I'm still figuring out if I'm gonna do the conduit or make it fancy or whatever but that's a hundred dollars and considering other things out there around five hundred and and whatnot well, 500 and up, if you will. 30 miles per hour is good enough for me. It does everything that I need it to do. Um, Tesla already gives you the adapter with the Model 3. And, and from what I've read, they give it to you with the Model S and the X as well. But if you need more details, um, there are some videos on there. But the only thing that was confusing to me is where that neutral goes. And it's still kind of confusing to me, but um, I read a few read a few articles and saw a few videos explaining what the neutral is. And I can tell you there are three, at least three different descriptions on what the neutral actually is. So, all right, we're at the 15 minute mark. Thanks for watching again. If you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments. Bye for now.